Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. We're just going to give it one more minute to let everybody log in, and then we'll get started. All right, let's get going. Um, hi, everyone who just joined us. Welcome. My name is Carrie. I'm the marketing coordinator for Adair Homes. We are joined today by Chuck Wine. He is the home ownership counselor out of our Mid, or Mid Willamette Valley branch, excuse me. Um, and we are going to be touring the Aspen plan today. If anybody has any questions uh, they would like answered during the webinar, go ahead and use that Q&A feature or the chat box, and we'll be happy to get those answered. Go ahead, Chuck. Hi there. Thanks for uh, joining everybody. So, so I've done a couple of these now, and um, you know, so I'll try to kind of I'll try to get better as we go through this. A little background feed there. So let me turn that down. Um, but uh, today we're going to do the Aspen plan. It's a 2686 model. Uh, it's got a lot of nice features that I'll kind of go through. So. We'll talk about the plan first and um, some of the specific things that these customers did to the plan, just minor modifications and tweaks that we did. And then we'll do a video tour and I'll kind of talk throughout that and show the plan. Uh, like Carrie said, if you have any questions as we're going through this, please feel free to ask them and we can pause and sort of address questions as we go through the, through the plan. So let's start with just a kind of a short discussion about the plan. So the Aspen, 2,686 square feet. It comes with two um, exterior looks right now, so uh, I know we've got a lot of a lot of um, looks these days between the craftsmen and the farmhouse homes and things like this one. So this home currently has the signature series that shows like this, uh, and I'll get into the detailed plans here in a second. And then we also have the impressions. You'll notice that the primary difference between the two is the roof line. On the impression series, it's a hip roof where everything will kind of lean into the center height. Uh, where on the signature series, it's more of a traditional gable roof style that runs throughout the entire house. The one we're going to be looking at today is the signature series of this plan. So if we go to the floor plan, so 2,686 square feet, so it's got a lot of space to it. It is a four bedroom plan with a, with a split master. So the master is situated um, on the left side of this plan behind the garage space with three bedrooms on the other side and a den. So uh, from a room size standpoint, things like that. So these aren't very, you know, they're not really small rooms like you'll see in some plans. The, the bedrooms are 11 by 13, 12 by 12, and 13 by 11. So they're good size bedrooms for the kids. And the den is, is a really good size too. It's a 12 by 16. So it's a real functional office space for you. On the plan that we're gonna be looking at today, um, we built this one out in Veneta. Uh, Oregon and they made just a couple minor modifications that I'll sort of point out and then I'll point it out as we do the do the video tour as well. So um, this is their specific plan right here that we built. Now if we go to the general plan I'll point out a couple things. So one we did a modify on this because generally there's a hallway right here that you can see right there and they wanted just to open that up to give the the great room more breathing space. On their plan, uh, generally on a, uh, on a signature porch, it'll be an enclosed soffit. So it'll be a hardy plank soffit that's on the underside. They really wanted more of a craftsman front porch. So I'll show that when we do the walkthrough on the plan. And then uh, on this plan, it has a corner island like this. And uh, it's been a really popular option with us. Some of our plans have this 10 foot by four foot island, uh, the Lincoln, the Clickitat, the um, cashmere have this really long island and the customers love that island. And so we did a modification to put in this island right here. Uh, a couple things that I would note. Um, well, I could, actually I'll circle back and talk to it as we sort of tour the plan because um, we did a unique wall texture to this and things like that. On the home that we'll walk through today, so a lot of people kind of wonder like, 
you know, what's base and what's an upgrade. So as we do that um, video walkthrough, I'll make sure to try to point those things out to you guys. But just to get you um, in the right kind of place for when we look at this one, this home had about $30,000 in upgrade options. So, you know, a lot of people wonder if the base price is, you know, um, what you get in the base price and what you don't. So, so this home is about $30,000 of the upgrade options. And I'll kind of point that out as we go, you know, sort of where that money went. Um, and I kind of like this one specifically because it'll show you really how much $30,000 can do for you from like a standard to an upgrade and things like that. You don't have to spend $100,000 to really get the home that you want. So, and as you're balancing your budget that uh, you can kind of focus on these things. So let's go ahead and move over to the video and we'll start talking about that. Okay, so here is the Aspen home. You'll notice that uh, one of the things that I'll point out on this is that everything is a hardy plank on the exterior of the home, including um, the trim pieces in the corners and everything. On a signature series, uh, you will get the same kind of treatment all the way around the home. So, so all the windows, all the door, doors will be trimmed out. And then on the sides, you'll also get the batten board going up and down. So that's, uh, that's you know specific with the signature series because when people look at the plans, a lot of times they wonder what's the difference between the traditions and the signature. Traditions only gives those elements on the front of the home, where the signature will wrap the home and all those features. So we'll go ahead and hit play. So uh, a few things about this, this plan is we built this, this was my first VA construction loan. So we did this one through a finance partner, Alliance Financial Services, and they have a zero down option for a VA construction loan. So it is um, you know, a fantastic program. We're really honored to have it to be able to work with uh, our veterans and getting them in these homes for as, as little as zero down on the plan. So this was my first ever VA construction loan that I did because um, it's a newer program. So we were absolutely honored to be able to help the customers do this. Um, uh, the home is almost done. So there's a couple things that we're still working on on the home, but fundamentally this home is pretty darn close to being done. You can see they just have their driveway poured and their apron. That's something the customer con contracted out on their own. Uh, these customers did uh, more of the sweat equity route with the plan. So, you know, as we can talk about later, and if you've got questions about it, feel free to fire them off to carry. But, you know, we've got more of a turnkey route and more of a sweat equity route, um, depending on what's going to work best for you and your family. So we'll kind of get into those details as we, um, as we talk about it. So we are approaching the front of the home right here. And we've got the garage on the left and then uh, the den right here is what we're we're walking up to right now. And like I had said, we did a couple custom options for this plan. So this is one of them was that front porch. So we did the craftsman style post with the cedar with the cedar beams going down. And then usually it's a tongue and groove or I'm sorry, usually it's a hardy plank soffit that's underneath that's built under that. And they really wanted this kind of tongue and groove look. So so we've got the tongue and groove cedar on the underside of the porch. So we do this on our craftsman homes, um, but we can also modify it into different plans. I told myself I'd kind of point out a couple of things that people sort of wonder about on the plan. So every plan will have um, uh, two exterior plugs, two exterior outlets, usually one at the front door and one at the back door, and then two hose bibs at well. And the placement of those is kind of different on the different plans, but it'll have usually one in the front of the home and one near the rear of the home for hose bibs. You can see on the siding too, when we say that the homes are hardy plank, they are 100% hardy plank. So that even includes all of these trim pieces. So it's not just the lap siding, it's the trims, it's the corners, it's all hardy product on the outside of the home. So uh, I, you know, I know of many custom builders out there that, that still will use lesser materials for, for their siding. Obviously I pointed it out. Okay, so we're gonna head into the home. So uh, right at the entry, it opens up really into the, into the main primary living space, opens up right away. And you get those couple really big windows out the back. And then if we turn left, you will see this is the den space. So this was the 12 by 16 den space with a couple really large windows in it. The customers did an upgraded carpet um, throughout the carpeted areas that we kept. And they also did laminate floors in the home. So uh, we'll kind of point that out. And then a couple unique options that, that uh, were very one-off uh, that we don't do on all the plans. 
So one thing that I like to point out on the homes, so the homes come standard with just drywall wrap on the windows. So six inches of drywall around all the sides. On this particular home, we chose to do a windowsill option. So we added windowsills with a small apron down beneath on all the windows in the home. And then um, on this plan, we did a modified trim package. So we've got a lot of base moldings and door, door trim. So we've got three standard selections that we do in a home. But if you've got something that you really specifically want with a trim package, uh, likely we can custom option it in. So in their particular case, they wanted the Craftsman style with the four inch header and then also four inch going down the sides, where generally it's kind of a two and a quarter inch going down the sides. So they wanted a thicker molding there. And then we did a five inch square edge base molding. So a tall square edge base molding throughout the home. Then I am gonna pause it here because this is one of the options that the customers did. So homes come with what's called uh, an orange peel texture, which is what you'll see in most homes. The customers wanted kind of an upgraded texture and this is what's called a Santa Fe texture. Um, that's more of like a hand troweled kind of look throughout the home. So a nice custom piece for the home. And we've got a local drywaller that really excels in it. So, so it's something that we can offer to the customer. So talk to your local HOC and see if that's something they can, they can work on with uh, getting priced in for you, if that's something that you're interested in. So the home has a vault. So one of the options where, you know, part of that $30,000 in upgrades was adding this vault that we did right here. Laminate floors throughout the main body of the home, the great room, kitchen, half bath, things along those lines. So just a nice laminate floor. And then, like I had said, so on the standard plan, usually there's a little hallway right here. So it's, you know, probably like a six foot depth hallway right there. So uh, they, they really just wanted to open that space up entirely. So we just got rid of the hallway and pushed, uh, pushed that back a little bit to give them even a more wide open space. And there you go. So large great room space. I can circle back to the plans and kind of review it here in a few minutes. Then we'll turn around. So there's your entry, kind of turning around with your coat closet, right? When you walk into the front of the door. And then the kitchen. So nice, large kitchen. And this is where we did a couple of those custom options. So this is the 10 foot by four foot island. It's a really large island. Um, and so generally what we do is we'll put a couple cabinets on either side, about a foot a foot each on either side just to support the counterweight because that's a it's a large counter space to, to support right there so 10 foot by four foot island but obviously it'll be the centerpiece of the home uh you know this is a young family with two you know it's a growing family and things like that so you can imagine that's where the homework's getting done that's where lunch is getting ate so so that'll be a well-used space in their home uh, these customers also did um an option to do naughty alder cabinets on the lowers throughout the home, but in the kitchen, they wanted painted cabinets for the uppers. So we just did a custom option to, to modify that. So you'll kind of see that as we walk around the kitchen that the, that the upper cabinets will be slightly different. It's all gonna be a shaker style that we did. And we've got a porcelain enamel cast iron sink that we put in the plan from Kohler. And then there's kind of the uppers right there. Standard range oven. So the home will come with the home will come with a, a whirlpool glass top range oven combo shown right here, a microwave up above. And then there's a dishwasher that we'll see over here by the sink. So no, um, no refrigerator, no washer and dryer, but the basic appliances are included in the plan. For these customers, we really have two pendant light options. We have just a, um, a nickel and a bronze version of a pretty simple pendant light. So for a lot of customers, what they prefer to do is just to have us wire for the pendant lights. So that's what you'll see here. We just did the wiring and added a switch to the wall for three pendant lights. And then the customer purchased and, and installed their own pendant lights that they wanted over the island. So, so that's something that uh, the customers can do on the home. We also did a custom option. So the customer is really handy. And uh, like I said, this was much uh, kind of a sweat equity route and things like that. So 
So he's, um, you know, he, he does like lots of projects and things like that. He was really involved. So he had his own vision for a backsplash that wasn't something that we, that we had as, a, as an option that was available. So we just went ahead and deleted the backsplashes. And then once he moves in, he's going to come in and do his own custom backsplash. So that's why you'll notice that there aren't backsplashes. And there's the big single bowl um, top mount Kohler sink, cast iron porcelain enamel sink. with the naughty alder cabinets. We've got quartz counters in this house, um, in the kitchen. So again, just kind of being um, pragmatic with the money. Um, we did quartz counters in the kitchen and then just a nice laminate in the, um, in the uh, bathrooms. There's the sliding glass door, obviously. So now we'll head back to the bedroom space of the home where the three bedrooms are. And you can tell they're definitely getting ready to move in. So just showing off more of that custom trim package that we did specifically for, for these customers. And she's got her bed. She's all, they're all ready to go. They're, they're itching to move in here. And then we'll turn around. So generally speaking, so closets have um, closets and bedroom doors are six panel doors. So that's the standard door that you're seeing right there. And then, um, like I had said, on this home, uh, we, did, we just did window sills. So if on your home you want to do full wrap windows, you want to fully encase the windows, part of that option will also be to carry that over to the closet doors. So then we would fully, fully case the trim out the closet doors as well. Other than that, they usually just put this header over the top right there um, as part of the general trim package that we'll do. So you'll see a sliding glass door right there. A couple acres out in Benita. Really popular area to build out here. They got great appraisal values. It's been, it's been, you know, it's been really nice for the customers. So we'll head probably over here into this little side bathroom. So uh, mostly standard on it. So the cabinet's a slight upgrade, you know, standard door hardware, standard sink. Um, this is a, this is a high definition laminate, which is really just a few dollars extra from what some of our standard laminates. It's not a, it's not a very expensive upgrade. It's a nice compromise um, for a lot of people. Chrome is the standard uh, plumbing fixtures. So we use Moen for everything. So even if you do nickel or bronze, it's still, of course, the Moen products, those finishes just cost a little bit more on the plans. This home, which my wife and I were just talking about this in our house, we're sorely lacking a linen closet in our house with our five children. So, so this home has a very generous double door linen closet. Uh, so you can stack, you know, uh, you know, all the towels that you need in that closet right there. There's our standard tub shower combo. So bathrooms will have a tub shower combo. And now to the other two bedrooms. So once again, so we just did a, a slight upgrade on the carpet from the standard. Uh, this is an eight foot ceiling. So these are standard window heights to come in this plan. So they're very large windows. Gel when again, I'm kind of showing off that, um, that texture that we did on the house. And the last bedroom. Short of the master. So I will say, um, one of the things that, uh, you know, and why, and why we like to do this is because people have, a, people have a hard time kind of envisioning plans and things like that. It can be really hard to kind of just looking at a piece of paper, get a sense of the space and things like that. So when I was working with these customers, we, they, we actually had 20 custom options. We were going to chop this thing up and just really redesign it and change it and things along those lines. And it just so happens that we had built this house just a mile away from here for another young family, really nice kids. And I gave them a call and I said, they had moved in. They had been in the house for probably a year. And I said, you know, hey, you think it'd be okay if maybe we walk through the house or something along those lines? I got some customers that would really like to see the plan. And so, so I took the customers that, that, that did this house and walked them through a customer's house after they'd been in the house for a year. And, and then they realized, you know, how much they really loved the layout because I was kind of bringing that up because originally when I saw this plan, I kind of had the same feeling, you know, I couldn't really get a good sense of it because 
um, you'll see that we've walked through this whole primary living space right here. And then there's this separation of space to the master. So if you really want like a, like a master that's broken off from the plan, this is a great plan for it because there's this large separation of space right here that's a half bath you know, the pantry to the kitchen and then the utility room and then the master behind it. So, you know, if you look at the general floor plan, you know, I guess originally when I saw it, I just didn't really quite understand it and how it worked in the space because I thought that it was just a, you know, a, a kind of a unique dividing line between the home. But once you walk it and you feel it and you see it, then, then it really kind of makes sense for you. Like, oh, I, you know, I get a lot of privacy with this plan. This is a great use of the space. It's, uh, you know, for, from my perspective, it's a great, like, kind of a farmhouse, you know, for people because it's got this mudroom space that's dividing off the house. So, so you can come in from the back door, change out, you know, change out yourself um, in that space. It's got the utility room right there. So, so it's kind of a great farm plan in that sense. So I'll kind of pop back over here to the video and walk through. So you'll see that on the plan. So it's really just a uh, drywall framed openings right here. So it's just kind of open drywall that'll kind of walk it into that space. And then we'll kind of tour in there. And head into the mess or head into this kind of part of the home. So we'll turn around. So they add, there's an option to add a half bath right there. So this is the half bath on the left. And then this is the exterior door out to a little back patio. Again, we've got the laminate floors through there. So, so we'll open that up, you know, just a small half bath. And we continue the flooring on through there. And then when you turn around, you know, the half baths have the mirror and a pedestal sink. So that's the pedestal sink that comes standard with the plans. And then again, you'll see out here, we've got just a nice little covered area to walk out to your back patio from there. So you don't have to use that sliding glass door. And then again, we just continued on that, that uh, cedar soffit that we did on the home. The customers contracted with um, uh, some local contractors that we do a lot of work with. So, so if you were wondering, I would definitely talk to your home ownership counselor if they've got some good local contacts for site work. We've got some fellas that are really turnkey. They can fundamentally do most everything for a customer and give them a really comprehensive bid. Okay, so this is the utility space, just standard vinyl in here as we turn around. I did kind of have a short conversation with the customer. So, you know, looking back at it, you'll see that this is the space where the water heater goes and where the furnace goes. Um, you know, hindsight being 2020 after we had talked about it, he felt like that he wished um, we would have done a custom option to move these items out into the garage just to give them a really large kind of counter space, a folding space, and really um, you know, kind of, you know, make that utility room a little bit more useful. It's a large utility room regardless, but, um, but if you did a custom option to move those things out to the garage, it would, it would, it would really give you a large utility room to use. There's the pantry. You know, when we do a pantry, we put it in these four shelves, just like that. Bring you the pantry spaces. And it's a large pantry. Yeah. So you can see it kind of wraps around both sides right there. So good size pantry for a family. And out to the garage we go. And I'll kind of pause right here. So a couple things that the homeowners um, did. So like I said, this is a country property and things like that. So we did what's called a generator ready panel, which I would highly recommend to anybody that's kind of off the grid slightly. It's uh, uh, out of our branch. It's a thousand dollar option and it provides a transfer switch in your electrical panel that will go to a dedicated circuit outside that you can plug a generator into. So depending on the size of your generator, you know, if you have a power outage, you can run, you know, the essentials of a home. You know, you could run your refrigerator, your, your heating and cooling system, and, and you know, it, you only have to lose power for more than 24 hours a couple times for that $1,000 option to really pay for itself, and not to mention just to kind of make you comfortable uh, in your own home. The customers also did, uh, we got a three quarter horsepower belt driven uh, garage door opener that we added to the plan. That's a that's an upgrade option. One of the upgrade options that they selected. If you don't select it, we still put the wiring in place for the garage door opener, so you can self-install it. So so fundamentally, it'll be prepared for it. 
but um, we did add the garage door on this plan. We've got a finished garage here. So garages typically are um, only what's connected to living space will be drywall and insulated. So in this home, this is a finished garage. So we insulated all the garage, drywall and taped it. There's also what they call a level two where we'll texture it. So if you wanted to paint the garage or things like that, you could do a level two upgrade on that one. Okay, finally off to the master. Back this so way. Can you tell us specifically what the can you tell us specifically what the um, laminate flooring is? Uh, I would have to look. Um, uh, uh, I'm, uh, it's a Shaw laminate flooring. I'd have to look uh, to see specifically what it is. So if you just want to take a note, we can reach back out. Yep. So we added these little two by two windows. So you'll see an option on most plans for the master suite or any room, to be honest with you, to add just two by two windows, really just let light in, you know, kind of frame your bed and things like that. You'll see plugs on either side. So it's kind of set up for, for where you would position your bed in the, in the master suite. And Kathleen had a question about uh, the generator option. Sure. She said, is that to connect to a big external gener generator exactly. or can it connect to a smaller one that you put gas in? It could connect to a smaller one that you put gas in. It would just limit, it would just limit, uh, you know, how much you could run on the home for that generator. So obviously the larger generator you have, the, you know, the, the more you could run on the home, but it'll be an exterior plug, you know, dedicated circuit for a generator. and the master bathroom. So we did standard vinyl in there. So we got kind of like a, a brick set vinyl there. The dual sinks come standard in the plans for the master suite on this one. We've got the chrome Moen faucet with that high definition laminate. So we just did something that kind of matched the quartz that we had in the kitchen. We've got the windowsill. So if you do the master bath option in this home, the master bath, uh, the, the soaking tub would go right there. Um, in this case, we did just the walk-in shower. They didn't have a need for the, for the bathtub necessarily. So we just did a, I think it's $265 to convert from a tub shower to a walk-in shower. So you'll see there's the, the walk-in shower. And ta-da, there you go. That's pretty much a walkthrough of this floor plan. So, uh, all the homes have a lot of options that are available to them. So, so, you know, we could have done one, you know, any number of things on this one, but you know, we were keeping the customers to a budget, the property, the property was not uh, an inexpensive property. They ended up with a really expensive septic system. So, so that kind of dictated, you know, some of the things we were able to do on that home. But when you do the design meeting with your homeownership counselor, you'll go room by room. And yeah, and if you're trying to keep to a certain budget and things like that, you can be very pragmatic about it. So upgrade certain spaces, leave certain spaces standard. Um, so you can kind of target your upgrades um, to the best of your ability. And, and you don't even really have to feel pressure about it because we'll, we'll happily build you a quote with everything that you, that you might want in the home and give you a line item, detailed quote, send you home with it. And you guys can sit at home and prioritize all those things, um, you know, your own leisure and kind of and determine what's the most important things for you in your own home. So I'll kind of pause right there and open it up to any questions that, that people might have. So Joy wanted to know if the exterior, if those are pre-painted hardy planks. They are not, they are primed. So they are basically paint ready. So that's why you'll see um, if we go back to the start of the video, um, uh, that it's, uh, you know, pre-primed hardy is usually this kind of yellow color that we have right here. So, so it is a uh, paint ready hardy. And the homeowners, uh, if you don't have us paint the home, the homeowners will go through and do the, the caulking on the home and then the painting of the home for the trim and, and things like that. So you'll, you'll see that there will be caulking beads up here in the batten board, around the corners, around the windows and doors, um, the actual lap siding does not need to be caulked in the middle as individually flashed in these, in these points of the home, but on the corners around the windows and doors um, and the batten board will be, um, will be caulking and then painting. 
Um, and then Kathleen was wondering, um, she said, you mentioned the customer could plug their own pendant lights and you would wire it and have it ready to go. And also that that customer is putting in their own backsplash. Do these need to be done to get a CO? I'm assuming that's a custom option. No, lighting, the, no, those things, um, the, the, those lighting pieces are not required for occupancy permits. Those, those would not prohibit you from getting occupancy. Shockingly, somehow lights, or at least locally with our jurisdiction, um, that's not required for, for occupancy. So, um, and then, you know, a lot, you know, I imagine a lot of times, um, you know, they'll um, talk to some of the Finnish, Finnish folks and stuff like that. So I imagine they, they even sometimes they get assistance in installing the lights if they're challenged and things like that. So just develop a good relationship with your superintendent and, and we're going to try to make the process as easy as possible for you. And then um, Joy was asking, what was spent on site prep on this lot, including septic, if any? Well, so I don't have the specific numbers on this lot. Um, that's, that's where we kind of got, because these customers actually had a really big budget. Um, but we had to make some choices on this particular property because they sort of got the worst of all worlds. Um, Vanita has really high permit fees and things like that. And they and they were right on the cusp. So it's like, it's almost like one of those, like you're in the urban growth boundary situations. So you get the, you get the benefit of paying all the city fees and the taxes and things like that, but you're in a county property. So, so it required a septic system. Uh, out in Vanita, it's got a really high water table and the soils are not as good. So you always have to do advanced septic systems on these properties, um, ATT systems, or some people call them sand systems. So, so yeah, their site costs actually were relatively high. I want to say the permits were around $20,000. It was around a $20,000 septic system and then probably, you know, another $20,000 of site work. So, so the, the site costs on this one were what I would say is kind of higher than normal. Um, is the foundation included in the cost? It is, absolutely. Um, we do the foundation and the garage floor. The homeowners um, contracted with some folks that we use all the time, and then they did the flat work. So the driveway, the apron, the porches, and the patios on the exterior of the home. Um, could he customize a home without a second floor? Um, it probably wouldn't make sense. I mean, we probably could, but... Um, from, uh, from a, it'd be a semi-custom home or a mo highly modified plan. And generally speaking, it would probably be, for most homes, it'd probably be easier to modify the first level of a one level home than to try to, than to, try to take off the second level of a two level home. Um, Rick would like to know if we help customers find land or property. Absolutely. So, so, well, and I shouldn't say absolutely. Uh, your home ownership counselor should be, you know, keyed into the properties and, and is probably aware of properties that come on and off the market and just keeps a keeps a closer eye on these things than, than the average person. But, you know, locally, I've got any number of realtors that I work with um, that I will refer clients out to that, that will give them attention. So I think a lot of people have a hard time with just realtors because when they're looking at land, the realtor doesn't see the big dollar signs in their eyes. And so they're kind of become like second class customers to, to them. So I have some really good relationships with realtors locally um, that, will, that will spend the time and the energy and help people find lots. They'll get creative. Um, I actually just had a realtor send me because um, I wanted, um, personally, I want, you know, about kind of 10 acres of property. And um, I'm working with a realtor up in Albany. And he sent me a local property that has three parcels. It's a house on three acres, and then there's two five-acre parcels. And so, you know, you can kind of combine the whole thing and then sell off the house and then keep the 10-acre parcels and kind of develop that. So, so if you work with the realtor um, that uh, your homeownership counselor kind of recommends, that's the kind of level of service that you could probably get from somebody. So if you feel like you're not getting help from a, from a realtor, I would talk to your homeownership counselor. They probably have somebody that would be happy to help you along the process. Um, Veronica would like to know if we can build a 15 foot trailer garage. Sure. Um, uh, you know, I've been around for three years, so I've seen a lot at this point, but I, I in my first year here, I kind of laughed because I swore most people didn't build houses for houses, they built houses for garages. I can't find a house with the right garage, so let's just build it. Um, so yeah, so we could absolutely add a third car garage, RV garage, tall door, um, 
We don't have it as like a pre-priced option per se because structurally it's a little bit different with every plan. So, um, so again, get with your home ownership counselor and they can write up a custom option, get with the drafter and the purchaser to determine how much that third car garage with the tall garage door would be and things like that. So, so we figured out for every uh, customer specifically, but yes, absolutely, we could do that. And Rick would like to know if we can build two houses on a property. Well, that is not up to us. That would be up to your local jurisdiction. So um, generally speaking, um, locally, or at least in my experience um, with the jurisdictions that I work with, only one permanent structure is allowed on a lot. So, so you would want to talk to the county, the, the county that you're looking to build in and have a conversation with them about that. Is the inside of the house pre-primed for painting if the customer is doing their own painting? Yep, yep, it'll be, um, it'll be textured. I've had a, uh, had a conversation with the drywaller about it. So it'll be textured and um, part of his texturing, he puts a, a kind of like a coat on it, but he would still recommend that you do two coats of paint, even though he's kind of self-priming it himself. He still recommends that you do two um, coats of finished paint on the home. On the um, call key. Oh yeah, go ahead. Well, yeah, I'll finish. So on the caulking, homeowners are responsible for filling the nail holes. So getting the putty and filling the little nail holes from the from the installation, and then doing the caulking beads around the around the trim as part of painting. Um, and then Joy was wondering how long this build took um, from permit to finish. Um. Well, this one went up pretty quick. So let's see here. Um, so, so we kind of were finalizing our plans with the customer just on the home um, late, late August is when we were finalizing plans with this home and likely they were in permitting and, and jurisdictional work and getting the permits approved for about four months out of my branch 120 days is the average for customers to be in pre construction. If I remember correctly, they were they were right in there. They might have been 130 140 days, but they were pretty close to that. So um, so yeah, so we probably started this home in, in early January. So it was about a seven month build on this one because it's been done for a while now from when I took this video. Um, are we restricted to using your plans? No, not at all. So uh, we have, um, of course, a whole set of stock plans and things like that. If you have a plan that you're really interested in, um, I'll give you a, kind of the, the, the quick breakdown of this and then tell you to call your home ownership counselor. But we do custom plans. Um, it's a different process and procedure that you would go through. And we will take an existing plan and we will, I call it a dare I it or whatever. So we'll run it through our specs, our, cal you know, our calculations, our standard building materials, and we'll produce a concept based off of the floor plan that you want to build specific to you. And then like with most of our plans, we'll do it at a base level. So kind of eight foot ceilings, flat ceilings, things like that. And then they'll provide you all the same options we provide on the other home. So nine foot ceilings, vaults, master bath upgrades. So they kind of, when you go through the custom home program, they try to mirror it closely to what we do for a standard home program as well, uh, to give you a lot of flexibility with options and pricing and things like that. Um, but you'll want to talk to your home ownership counselor about um, what it would take to, to, you know, kind of, Get into get into that program. And Kathleen wanted to know if they do elect to do the painting themselves, does it need to be completed to gain occupancy, or can it be done over time? Um, that's a good question. I think um, the exterior does not need to be painted to to gain occupancy because that's to a certain degree weather driven. Now your warranty will be impacted. Um, by the timing of your exterior painting. You can't let that go for a long time just for warranty purposes. The in, um, I'd be making it up if I told you if I knew I was certain on the interior of the home. I believe the interior of the home has to be painted for occupancy. And again, with like your trim and things like that, there's warranty issues with it because um, that finished coat of painting is part of the, the warranty on the, on the trim package. So, so I'm, leaning towards, I'm leaning towards you would have to have it painted first. Well, it looks like that's about it. Okay. Well, point being, so a lot of you probably have other questions and things like that, or this brought up different things for you. So, so um, like we've been saying, you know, reach out to your local branch um, or your home ownership counselor if you're already working with somebody and, and um, talk to them about your specific jurisdiction. You know, every jurisdiction is different. So, 
So um, they'll help give you some context about where you're looking to build. So short of that, thanks everybody for joining. Thank you guys.